हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी फैक्टर्स मॉडिफाइंग ड्रग एक्शन नाउ इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट सेम डोज ऑफ अ ड्रग कैन प्रोड्यूस डिफरेंट रिस्पॉन्स इन डिफरेंट पेशेंट्स एंड ऑल्सो इन द सेम पेशेंट एट डिफरेंट ओकेजन्स नाउ एज वी ऑल नो दैट नो टू इंडिविजुअल्स आर अलाइक डिफरेंसेज इन द रिस्पॉन्स अकर ड्यू टू थ्री बेसिक डिफरेंसेज अमंग इंडिविजुअल्स Now, first difference is the difference in the administration, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of the drugs in different individuals. Now, second difference is the variation in the number or state of receptors, variation in the signaling proteins that are responsible for producing the cellular responses. Now, third difference between individuals is the variation in the neurogenic or hormonal concentrations. now these differences are responsible for the variations in the actions of the drugs now let's see in what way action of a drug is modified now in majority of cases action of a drug is modified quantitatively that is either there is increase or decrease in the action of drug but in few instances there is qualitative change in the action that is quality of response changes for example a drug can produce allergy however uh, this is not commonly seen now let's uh, discuss some very important factors modifying drug action now the first factor is body size average adult dose is a standard dose of a drug and it refers to an individual of medium build or medium size for exceptionally obese or lean individuals and for children dose for majority of drugs is calculated based on the body weight as per the following equation so individual drug uh, is equal to body weight in kilogram divided by 70 into average adult dose for anti cancer drugs and for few other drugs dose is calculated by body surface area instead of body weight next important factor modifying drug action is the age now as we all know there are a number of important physiological differences between children elderly and adults now in children the body and body functions are in developing stage while in elderly functions are in declining stage like for example reduced kidney function reduced liver function so dose for children and elderly is different from the dose of adults for children dose is calculated either from the adult dose or from the body weight or from the body surface area or it is given in a uh, milligram per kilogram basis as per the requirement now since body organs of children are in developing state and are not fully mature children can suffer from adverse effects like for example corticosteroids can cause suppression of growth androgens can promote early fusion of epiphyses and stunting of stature that is reduced height deposition of tetracycline can occur in growing teeth leading to discoloration and deformation of teeth now apart from children in infants due to physiological differences like for example low glomerular filtration rate half life of drug like streptomycin is prolonged as streptomycin is excreted by glomerular filtration then uh due to immature tubular transport of kidney in infants half life of drug like penicillin is prolonged because penicillin is excreted in urine by tubular secretion due to liver immaturity uh inadequate hepatic metabolism of drugs like chloramphenicol can occur which can result in uh, serious side effects like gray baby syndrome now apart from children and infants in elderly progressive decline in kidney function and liver metabolizing activity increase the incidences of adverse drug reactions 
because majority of drugs are excreted by kidney and majority of drugs are metabolized by the liver. Now decline in the kidney function impairs excretion of drug while de decline in the liver function impairs metabolism of majority of drugs. Now uh, due to old age sensitivity of drugs is also altered. Sensitivity of drug is either increased or it is reduced which again modify the action of drug. Now the next factor modifying drug action is the gender or sex. Now as we all know physiological, hormonal and genetic differences exist between males and females. Females have a smaller body size and require doses on the lower side of range. Marked or significant physiological changes occur during pregnancy and lactation uh, that alter the absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion of drug. Now this modifies drug action and thus drugs should be administered very carefully in consultation with the physician in pregnant and lactating women. Now androgens obviously are male hormones and thus they are unacceptable in women and similarly estrogens are unacceptable to men. Then uh, gynecomestia is a side effect of ketoconazole, uh, metoclopramide, chlorpromazine digitalis and it is found to occur only in men. Now the fourth important factor modifying drug action is the species and race. Now different animal species respond differently to some drugs. For example rabbits are resistant to atropin. Then rats and mice are resistant to digitalis. Now similarly human races also exhibit differences in responses to certain drugs. For example, blacks need higher and Mongols lower concentration of atropin to dilate the pupil. Similarly, Indians tolerate thiacetazone, uh, an anti-tubercular drug, better than the whites. Now, the next factor modifying drug action is the genetics. Now, some specific genetic defects produce variation in the drug responses. Now glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is a cytosolic enzyme and deficiency of this enzyme may lead to hemolysis with drugs like primaquine, chloroquine, sulfasalazine and other oxidizing drugs. Another example, low activity of cytochrome P450 2C9 enzyme metabolizes warfarin at a very slow rate and metabolism of warfarin at a very slow rate increases the risk of bleeding. Another example thio, uh, thiopurine methyl transferase. Thiopurine methyl transferase is a, a enzyme that is responsible for the metabolism of 6-mercaptopurine and azathioprine. So thiopurine methyl transferase deficiency reduces metabolism of 6-mercaptopurine and azathioprine thereby increasing the risk of severe bone marrow toxicity with 6-mercaptopurine and azathioprine. Another very important factor modifying uh, drug action is the route of administration. Now as we all know that every route of drug administration has its own advantages and disadvantages. Now in emergency where very fast action of drug is required, drugs are often given by parenteral route. Otherwise, and, uh, otherwise the drugs are given by the oral route. Oral route is a preferred route of drug administration. Now apart from this, a drug might produce different responses through different routes. For example, magnesium sulfate. When it is given orally, it causes purgation that is cleaning of the bowel. When it is applied on the inflamed area, it decreases inflammation, that is, uh, it produces anti-inflammatory effect. And when magnesium sulfate is given by the intravenous route, it produces central nervous system depression and hypotension. Another very important uh, factor modifying the drug action is the environment and time of administration. Now food, food is a very important factor. Food interferes with the absorption of drug like ampicillin. While fatty meal enhances absorption of drug like griseofulvin. Now apart from this hypnotics, hypnotics are more effective and they should be taken at night. 
while corticosteroids when used as a single morning dose cause less pituitary adrenal suppression and therefore produce less side effects another very very important factor is the psychological factor psychology of the patient plays a very important role in therapy if a patient becomes nervous and anxious before surgery he or she would require a higher dose of general anesthetic now next very important factor modifying the drug action is the pathological state now pathological states are very important in modifying the uh, action of drug now let's first talk about the liver disease now as we all know liver is the largest organ of uh, drug metabolism and liver diseases like cirrhosis cirrhosis either inhibit or completely stop metabolism of drugs and which obviously causes toxicity now drugs like verapamil salbutamol glycerol trinitrate morphine these are the drugs which undergo high first pass metabolism now in liver liver disease these drugs are not metabolized and since they are not metabolized this increases their bioavailability and therefore this results in their increased action then uh, another uh, example here is uh, liver disease reduces synthesis of serum protein like albumin now normally albumin binds the acidic drugs now reduced serum albumin reduces protein binding of acidic drugs like diclofenac and warfarin now uh, since the protein binding of these drugs is reduced this increases the free concentration of diclofenac and free concentration of uh, warfarin in the blood and which can cause serious adverse drug reactions for example excessive warfarin can cause bleeding then uh, pro drugs pro drugs are the drugs that are inactive on their own they are metabolized in the body to produce biologically active drug so because of the liver disease pro drugs become less effective since they are not metabolized properly in the liver for example enalapril acyclovir enalapril and acyclovir both are pro drugs which are required to be metabolized to to produce their active form and further to produce their action now after liver disease uh, let's talk about a kidney function uh, kidney disease reduced kidney function now majority of drugs are excreted in urine by the kidneys so clearance or excretion of drugs primarily excreted unchanged in the urine is reduced so kidney disease reduces the excretion of drugs like uh, amino glycosides digoxin phenobarbitone etc now apart from this permeability of blood brain barrier is also increased in renal failure this is due to the accumulation of toxic products like urea uric acid ammonia and since the permeability of blood brain barrier is barrier is increased uh, drugs like opiates then barbiturates phenothiazines benzodiazepines they easily uh, cross the blood brain barrier and these drugs they produce more central nervous system uh, depression another factor modifying drug action is the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic interaction now let's understand this with the help of an example now diuretics diuretics uh, they increase the urine uh, they increase the volume of urine now diuretics they cause a loss of potassium from the body leading to hypokalemia that is low potassium in the blood and hypokalemia increases the digitalis toxicity another important factor modifying drug action is accumulation of drug in body that is piling up of drug in the body that is accumulation of drug in the body now for example prolonged use of slowly eliminated drugs like chloroquine causes their accumulation or accumulation in the body and which further causes the renal damage now another important factor modifying the drug action is the tolerance that is when the tolerance develops uh, to a certain drug now tolerance is the requirement of higher dose of a drug to produce a given response now tolerance can be natural it can be acquired or it can be cross tolerance now natural tolerance uh, rabbits they are naturally tolerant uh, to uh, atropin then black races they are tolerant to uh, mydriatics
Now next type of tolerance is a acquired tolerance. Now repeated use of drug. Now, when a drug is used repeatedly in an individual who was initially responses develops tolerance. That means repeated use of drug produces tolerance and that tolerance is called as the acquired tolerance. Now uh, tolerance develops to the sedative action of chlorpromazine. That is when the chlorpromazine is taken repeatedly over a long period of time, then tolerance develops to the sedative action of chlorpromazine. Similarly, tolerance develops to the analgesic and euphoric action of morphine. Another type of tolerance is a cross tolerance. Now cross tolerance is the development of tolerance to pharmacologically related drugs. Uh, for example, alcoholics. Uh, now here alcohol is a seen as depressant. Barbiturates and general anesthetics are also seen as depressants. So alcoholics are relatively tolerant to barbiturates and general anesthetics. Then morphine and pathidine. Uh, if a person is uh, is uh, tolerant to morphine then the same person can be tolerant to pethidine also uh, that is a cross tolerance because morphine and pethidine they both are opioid analgesics so this is in brief on factors some of the factors modifying drug action now this information has been collected from a book essentials of medical pharmacology by kd tripathi now, if you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.